welcome back. I'm Di and today I am bringing you another Yarny update. Yarny updates are my monthly knitting podcasty thing where I talk about what I've been up to as far as my yarn crafts. This is Yarny update number 18 for the month of October 2020. I have two works in progress to share with you today and one finished item. If you had checked out my knitting diary for my 8 bit. Um, I've posted two episodes of the knitting diary for that project so far. You will know that I am participating in the Stephen West Slip Shavaganza Mystery Knit Along um, that has taken up a lot of my knitting time in October. This is the first year that I have participated in his mystery knit along. It's also my first Stephen West pattern. So it was a big month of me trying to stay on track and keep up with everybody. But it was a lot of fun. I am still not done yet so that it is one of the projects that you are going to see um, shortly. But that is not the project that I am going to start off with. So I did mention my 8-bit. That is an all-over colorwork sweater that was designed by Lattes and Llamas. And it's a video game, retro video game inspired charts um, all over a colorwork sweater. So I have been working on that. I did post, like I said, two video updates on it so if you're interested in hearing me talk about that project definitely check out my knitting diary videos on those the first video in that series also includes a small vegas vlog um, i did take a road trip to las vegas in september and so you can catch up a little bit with me there i'm not the best about filming um life things um, but if you're interested to take in a few of the sites um, definitely check that out as well so the 8-bit is one of my works in progress and then I started a new project so I will reach over here in this bag which is just some old Hawaiian fabric that um, we had, my mom made me another sock sack, and so I am working on a pair of socks for my dad for Christmas. I am using Regia Black is Back. Oh, can you see that? Regia Black is Back. And it's just um, black and grays. So... It's the first time that I am actually knitting up some Regia. <laughs> um, I have collected a few um, skeins of Regia recently, but this is the first time that I'm knitting a pair of socks up or even using the yarn. Um, I'm doing a 72 stitch sock for my dad in a 3x1 broken rib, as you can see. I have stitch markers to tell me how long I am making the leg so that I have matching um, socks. I am making them about 60 rows in the leg. So I did a um, 15 round one by one rib. Um, let me get closer. I will put this down. 15 row one by one rib, a 60 row three by one broken rib, and then a your normal slip stitch heel flap, a um, square heel turn, and now I am working down uh, the foot. So this is going to take me a while. Um, I have not done a pair of socks for a man. Um, my mom's socks take a man's stitch count 
um, around. But lengthwise, her, myself, and my daughter, we all have the same um, length foot. My dad's foot is obviously a bit longer than ours. Um, and I'm taking a stab in the dark because my dad doesn't live in the same state that I do and I don't get to see him very often but based on what my mom told me I'm taking a guess as to how long his foot is now I don't want to ask because it will give the surprise away um, but yeah uh, I made a sweater for my dad last year and this has all been kind of prompted by the fact that I just never know what to give my dad for Christmas and he just keeps asking for the same stuff over and over and over again and so I thought it would be nice to make him some handmade items he knows that I am a crafter um, but I've never really give him, given him handmade gifts I mean like I used to give him the stuff that we would make in school you know like um, wrapped hangers and uh, paper mache items and things like that but um, yeah he's retired now so I thought that he might have um, some appreciation for something that I made with my hands I guess so this heel um, the yarn that I'm using for the heel flap is Filcolana Arweta Classic in uh, like a light gray um, this is color 955 I'm not sure what the color actually is but this is leftovers from what I used to make my dad's wife's um, shawl which is the Duchess of Devonshire shawl that I showed a couple months ago I think on a yarny update so that's the first sock that's all that I was able to do in October I am going to get to the strip slap. <laughs> I am going to get to the slip stravaganza now. So if you do not want to be spoiled, like I said, I am not done yet, but I am on the last clue. So if you do not want to be spoiled, definitely skip ahead to the next section, which will be finished items, and um, you won't get spoiled. So. I am housing my slip extravaganza in this Halloween bag that my mom made for me. I thought I'm definitely going to need a lot of motivation to be able to stay with um, this knit along. I am terrible <laughs> at staying with knit alongs. Um, I don't know they always inspire me I always am rev to go for knit alongs and then I have the hardest time keeping my motivation up or even just keeping up um, with the knit alongs just because yeah, I either lose interest in the project or I fall so far behind that it ends up just being something like well I'll get to it eventually everybody's already done or everybody so far ahead I'm never going to be able to catch up but I really wanted to stay on task with this project and so I have been stitching away digital diligently on this project all of October the only reason why I was able to get as much of my dad's sock done as I did was because I miraculously had extra stitching time after I completed clue three. For clues one and two, I was stitching up until the night before the next clue came out. That's how long it was taking me, but for some reason, clue three didn't take me as long, and I had an extra couple of days. Um, and so, since I knew that I wanted to make my father a pair of socks for Christmas, I decided to go ahead and cast that on and get as much done as I could. Um, before the next clue came out. So, I am using, I will start with the yarns. I am using a lot of Cascade Heritage um, for this project. 
because I wasn't sure what this project was going to look like, I didn't want to invest in hand-dyed yarn. Um, and especially with hand-dyed yarn and you having to um, alternate skeins and things, and I knew that we'd need at least two skeins of main color, I didn't want to have to deal with alternating skeins at all. And so I decided to go for a little bit of a cheaper option, and I bought some Cascade Heritage. So for my main color, I am using Cascade Heritage Wave um, in graphite. So you can see that it is kind of marled, I guess you could say. There are lots of different... Um, grays and blacks and the, the amount of black changes so you can see here a little bit better um so i had two skeins of this i'm on my second skein and then i have cascade heritage and um bachelor's button as my contrast color one i have cascade heritage in deep ocean for contrast color two and then for contrast color three I have color 202 in Phil Kalana Arweta and this is just called teal I believe this is left over from my cousin's baby set that I had shown last month the um, newborn vertebrae and the <sighs> hodge booties. So I had leftovers um, that I wanted to use up for that. And so um, I do have one more skein if I need it um, because I haven't put in my contrast color three yet in the section that I'm working but I also at the encouragement of Stephen West um, he releases these little technique videos during the make-alongs and he had suggested to go ahead and put in some extra colors in certain sections if we so felt so inclined so I had some other colors lying around that I thought would work well in the second section. And so I also put in um, West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 Apply in uh, Bubblegum. Um, and Phil Kalana Arweta Classic in color 811. This, I believe, is called Turkis, and this is Leftovers. This is the Leftovers from my cousin's um, newborn vertebrae on the Hodge. I had bought the teal as an option. I wasn't sure which one of the two colors I wanted to use, and so I had both of them in stash. I ended up going with the lighter one, Turkis, um, for my cousin's baby set. But, yeah, so... Those were the colors that I ended up using. I also used some Knit Picks um, Stroll Fingering in a light gray color. I don't know what color that is at the moment because it is not in this bag anymore. I have swiped it away for a planned project in December, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. But let me um, show you where I'm at with my Slip Stravaganza. So I have this on... A shorter cord than I am able to be able to stretch out the shawl um, because it is quite big at this moment it is over 900 stitches per row at this point um, so this is what I have so far let me see if I can stretch it out just a little bit for you um, there so this is where I'm at right now this 
is two rows of section, well, I guess three, three rows of section four? No, four. Four rows of section four. So the gray, the light blue, the gray, and the um, darker blue, the deep ocean. So you can see that the final piece of the puzzle is these uh, chevrons. So this, um, these little triangles here and this section right here was clue three. And then this um, section right here is where I added all of the um, extra colors. So you can see, um, right here is like a diamond and so I have my um, I have color one here color two so bachelor button deep ocean this is teal and then this is the nitpicks gray this is Turkish and um, bubblegum so that's where I added those extra colors and then um, we have bonus clue one here and then clue one here so it is very very long um, it's not as deep as I thought it was gonna be but I don't know I think it will get a lot deeper once I block it out because there is a lot of squish um, in the fabric. So <sighs> this has been quite the labor of love during October. As I said, each row is now over 900 stitches at this point. It takes me about an hour and a half to do one row. So I perceive that this is still going to take me a long time. Now, <laughs> Stephen West did give us the option to make a shorter shawl. Um, so to lessen um, the amount of rows in clue four so that you only have one section of each of your um, colors so that will give you a bit of a shorter shawl but since this is my first go at not only this mystery cow but um, a Stephen West design I decided you know what let me just go for the big old large shawl size so I will be doing the large shawl size so that is going to be two sections of these um, chevrons in my contrast colors. So I've got about four more um, chevron rows to go, plus the little contrast um, section in between. I uh, thought early on that I was going to run out of the gray because at the end of clue two, I had to tie in uh, my second skein on the last row. So I was looking at everybody else's progress pics on Instagram and everybody else seemed to have um, yarn still, the main color from their first skein at the end of the second clue and I did not. So I thought I better be prudent and order an extra skein just in case and so I did do that I do already have it just in case um, but I didn't swatch for this project at all I don't normally swatch for accessories and so I'm just happy with what I have plus because I tied in these three extra colors here that saved on some of my um, contrast color yarn so I don't think that I'm going to have a problem making the large shawl size at all. The only concern would have been the main color and since I have extra, I'm not worried about it at all. So yeah, pretty happy with how this looks. I will say that I did make some mistakes um, <laughs> and I'll show you one right now. You can see this little thing right here. 
I had actually knit through um, one of the sections that should have been slipped and so when I caught that on the next row I fixed it but then I had all of this extra yarn um, from the stitches that I had knit so I just um, wove them in back here. I have been doing Stephen's um, weaving Stephen technique to weave in the ends as I go so all of these just need to be snipped I don't need to weave them in so that's going to be great I already snipped all of my ends um, down here so I don't need to do that and yeah so far so good um, if you're interested to know what the back looks like that's pretty much it it is very squishy I'm very happy with the colors that I chose for this project and oh, maybe by the end of the year I'll be done but because it takes so long um, for a row it definitely needs some dedicated time so I can only work on it uh, when I have an hour and a half to work on it because I don't like to stop mid row um, but yeah so far so good very happy with this and I'm really happy with my experience I think this will definitely be something that I'll be participating again in next year and I again will probably be doing it in a commercial yarn um, this is not a cheap um, project for even even though I went commercial, it still cost me quite a bit of money. Um, and so now that I know that there's going to be an investment every October, um, it's something that I can plan for, but I do have um, some stash. So I know a lot of people were able to stash dive, and for me that just wasn't a possibility. Um, with what I had. Uh, I do buy a lot of single skeins and um, just looking at the combinations that he was selling for kits, I wasn't sure about the types of things I have in stash. Um, I have a lot of variegated yarn. I don't have a lot of yarn that's just speckled and I don't have a lot of solids. Um, I do now <laughs> because I anticipate I'll have leftovers um, and then I had leftovers from my Clip Crows, Clip Crows Fly Again projects, my sweater and my daughter's socks, um, but I just wasn't happy with any of the combinations that I was coming up with and they wouldn't have been colors that I'd wear, so I'm glad that I was able to invest um, in the extra yarn for this project. This it are these are colors that I will wear these are colors that I wear a lot um, but yeah super happy with this so that's my slip extravaganza and that completes all of my works in progress so far so the last thing I want to share with you today are my daughter's socks these are her witchcraft socks um, these are the same pattern that I, I'm using for my dad's socks um, one by one rib, 15 rows. I did 30 rows of three by one broken rib. This I did a garter heel flap and a French heel turn, I believe, for her socks. And then I did a garter toe. I will be doing a normal toe, I think, for my dad. But I think I'll be following Kay Jones's cottage toe for him. I haven't decided yet, but I think that's the plan. But I did my daughter's um, in a garter toe, and it's super squishy. This is Ms. Monster's Creations yarn in the Witchcraft colorway, hence the Witchcraft socks. And the heels and toes are Cascade Heritage in grape juice. 
and yeah I'm really happy with this this is yarn that I had in stash for over a year and I really like the way that it came out there's definitely enough for me to make a pair for myself and now I can give these to my daughter so definitely happy with this project you've seen it in the past in a prior yarny update and I was able to finish it um, very early for her, um, but with the way things are at the moment, she wasn't able to wear them, and so she, she's just going to sock this into her collection um, for now, but it has started to get rather chilly where I am today. It's nice and cold and rainy, and so socks are probably going to come out for use. Um, but yeah, it's another one for her collection. I think at this point she's got more socks than I do, um, which is something that needs to be rectified. But yeah, as far as the things that I worked on in October, that is it. So um, let me just chat a little bit about future plans. Um, but first, I should probably tell you that I did knit this sweater. Um, what I am wearing is a Flax by Ten Can Knits. It's a free pattern on um, Ravelry. I knit this in Lion Brand Mandala yarn in the Genie colorway. And it is a sweater that I am really, really enjoy wearing. It's one that I wear quite a bit when the weather turns chilly and since today was the first day that I have been able to wear something nice and cozy, this is the one I reached for. So yes, my flax sweater. Now I did mention that I had pulled the light gray stroll fingering for another project and that project is the Bakery Bears Advent um, project. You probably know by now, if you've watched any of my videos, that I am a Bakery Bears patron. I have been a patron for almost two years now, and I really enjoy the content that they make, and I enjoy supporting them any way that I can. And so every December, the Bakery Bears do an advent calendar, which is kind of like their it's not vlogmas because there are not vlogs, but they put out a video every day in the month of December for their patrons. And last year was the first time that they did um, an advent project. So every other day, um, patrons would get a part of a pattern and we'd work through that as the month went on. It was the Yuletide socks, um, which I was telling you earlier that I don't keep up with <laughs> Miss G Knit Alongs. Um, I finished those in 2020, just a couple months ago actually, for Shark Week. Um, and so that was last year's Advent Project. This year's Advent Project we have no idea what it's going to be, if it's going to be a pair of socks or if it's going to be a, a shawl or what. Um, but we were told that we needed 10 20 gram minis, preferably in lighter um, semi-solids, lightly speckled or tonal yarns. And so I've been going through my stash and Pulling out all of those colors, I've put all of the ones that I thought would work into a bag and zipped it up. I haven't looked at it yet. I know there's more than um, 20, I know there's more than 10 colors in the bag. So I need to go through and um, arrange it and figure out exactly what I'm going to be using. But that's where that yarn is right now. It's in that bag um, for potential advent calendar use <laughs> so that's an upcoming project that I am planning on um, I 
do need to cast on a sweater um, for my daughter. I know what pattern it's going to be. I don't know it off the top of my head, but if I remember to, I will put a picture of it here. Um, I had gotten this pattern because Ellie from Skin Deer Knits had her Isbray pattern in um, in the publication, and at that time, Isbray was only available through the publication, and so I had just picked up the entire um, magazine and. This sweater um, was one that caught um, that I had discussed with my daughter about making a potential Christmas sweater in. So I'm using leftover yarn from my Ridgecrest pullover and um, the uh, a skein of leftovers from the Clip Crows Fly Gan projects. And so that's a great stash busting project that I do need to get done for her um, for Christmas. So I'd like to get that done, um, or at least well on its way in November. And then my mom has also asked me for a sweater. So I need to get that on the needle as well. I think I know what I'm going to do for that, but I'm not completely sure yet. Um, so I'm not going to say anything about that right now. But a sweater for her needs to get on the needles. And I do want to knit some Christmas socks. Christmas socks. I only have, I believe, one pair of red, white, and green socks. Um, that was kind of a bust project for me. It was the first time that I had tried helical knitting. I'm um, doing single red, white, and green stripes um, on a sock, and my first sock came out fine, but the second sock was, the gauge changed quite a bit. Um, I think I showed those earlier this year as well, um, but I have Christmas yarn that I want to make some Christmas socks in, so I need to get at least one pair done for my daughter, myself, and I this year. Um, I have been tinkering around with the idea of doing a Christmas yarn stash video. If that's something that you'd be interested to see from me, let me know. Um, I don't normally share my purchases on my channel just because I feel weird about doing that. Um, especially because a lot of times I don't purchase yarn for specific projects. Especially if it's like one skein of sock yarn. Um, I just pick it up because I like it. I don't know that what I'm going to use it for is probably going to be a pair of socks, but it could turn into a project like my City Limits sweater where I had this, all of this yarn in stash and I was able to make a very nice fade, um, faded garment with it. So yeah, I'm playing around with maybe sharing some of my acquisitions on this channel um, in 2021. but. Definitely let me know if you'd be interested in seeing my Christmas sock yarn stash um, soon below. And that's pretty much all I've got to share with you on this update. Let me know what you've been working on, if you've been participating in the slip extravaganza. If so, definitely let me know. Um, where I can see your project or if you talked about it on a video I'd love to check it out it was a super fun experience for me I definitely will be participating again next year I am pretty glad that for my first Stephen West design there was no brioche um, <laughs> as I know a lot of his designs have brioche um, but yeah let me know if you participated in that, let me know what your favorite thing that you worked on in the month of October was. And that is all I've got to share with you today. I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.